Hi friends! Today we are covering a new brand added to the Fude Beauty lineup, Tunsido. But if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to check out my virtual class schedule and maybe take class with me, then please sign up for my newsletter down below. As always, a huge thank you to Fude Beauty for not only sending these brushes, but providing the information on Tunsido, the brush prices, the brush task, pricing, and bristle type. I don't have the entire line, but I have some standout brushes that I think you will love. And with that said, I'm also a Food Aid Beauty affiliate, which means that the links down below in the description box will earn me a commission if you choose to use them. Tonsido brushes are recognizable by their iconic brushes with handles of red, black, and pearlescent blue, rarely found in Fude brush handles. Their natural brushes and fine craftsmanship make Tonsero one of Japan's most popular Fude brands. Bristles are typically Saikoho for face and cheek, Sokoho Goat, Gray Squirrel, and Kolinsky for cheek and eye brushes, and other materials include Red Squirrel, Pine Squirrel, and Pony. Many Tonsero brushes also come with different options for handle length to suit personal preferences. All brushes receive Tonsero's signature UV sterilization before before leaving the workshop. I'm reading from the Tunsido brand page. I will link it down below because they have a guide based on the handle of the brush will then determine the bristle type. It says here, Tunsido brushes follow a naming convention to the formula, handle length, type of bristle, shape of bristle, feral, size, special feature. Currently, Tunsido is the world famous top company in the makeup brush industry and has been adopted by many famous brand cosmetic manufacturers and used by professionals such as makeup artists. As a proud and solid manufacturer, it is highly evaluated both inside and outside the country. I'm very much honored to cover this brand and I can't wait to break down the different brushes that we have here. A few of the brushes that I will cover are not listed on the website, but Fude Beauty did say that if you are interested in one of those brushes, to email them as support at foodaybeauty.com and they will be able to arrange that order for you. Which also means that I might not have a price for a few of these brushes, but you will be able to find out those price points if you email support. First up, we have the E33 face brush, finishing brush with the short red handle. This brush is made with Psychoho goat hair, and I don't have a lot of finishing brushes. I don't use them very often because again, I sometimes just find myself finishing my cheek products, my complexion, and then I go on to the next thing. I probably go on to eyes from there. But what does finishing lend? What is the significance? Well, once you've applied all your powder products, maybe you've applied a mixture of powder and cream, you can then apply a loose powder that has a little bit of radiance, not necessarily shimmer, but some radiance that will have a blurring and soft focus effect on the skin, which is then better amplified if applied with a finishing brush. If you see up close here, it's not super packed, it's pinched on the sides, it's super fluffy and there's some flop to it in the movement, so it's very flexible and elastic on the skin, which again lends beautiful flow. You can see how the bristles move, they swim around the skin, it's not so tightly packed that it doesn't flow, and I think this is an optimal brush to then apply your finishing powder with because of the longer bristles and that is not tightly packed, it's not going to move your product because the point of finishing is to refine the products that are already on your skin to not necessarily take them away. And as you know, and I'm sure you've experienced, if you use a denser brush with shorter bristles, it will pick up more product from the skin and will possibly leave behind any spots, unevenness. With a brush length and density as seen in the E33, you could flow over your makeup without over manipulating it, without moving it. And what's left behind is a beautifully smooth finish that just fuses with your skin, especially if you have a heavy hand. I'm guilty of that as well. There are times that I might apply too much bronzer, blush, or highlight the finishing brush then comes in, picks up that excess product, again, keeping everything in place so your cheek products fuse together 
and look seamless on the skin. I also use this brush to apply my loose powder here. I use the Pat McGrath Light Medium 2 loose powder because again, great for finishing, but also wonderful to apply your loose powder in order to set your foundation. And then I followed with the LYS Bronzer in Medium Harmony because although it is a finishing brush, it might have a little more flop than you would like in a bronzer brush that might be a shorter bristle, maybe tighter packed for better product precision when placed in the hollows of the cheeks. I like big brushes for bronzer as well because it's big and fluffy, you can place the product here on the edge of the brush and use that to apply the product onto the hollows of your cheeks and then after, use a swirling technique to then buff the product out, especially because if it's bronzer, you'll be left behind with that beautiful sun-kissed effect that we're all looking after, right? The three, the classic three, which is what I think you can successfully achieve with a brush like this as its design. So although it is a finishing brush, it's like Coho Goat, very soft, but will have really nice pickup if you choose to use this for any of your loose powder purposes or bronzing purposes. Next, we have the 37B face brush with the short black handle, and this is made with dyed Psycho goat hair. When seen side by side, I believe the 37B has a little more bristle to it. It almost seems to be a bigger brush head than the E33, and I think that's also indicated by the slightly bigger handle. The handle length is the same. We still have the silver plated ferrules here and they're both pinched at the edge. Again, the pinched ferrule design then presents the flatter size on both brush, but still very fluffy as you see. With that to say, all the tasks that I covered speaking about the E33, you could accomplish with the 37B bronzer application, loose powder application, finishing, which very much ideal with the brush head this size. And you could probably also, in addition to the E33, use this for body makeup, body shimmer, bronzer. They're big enough to cover the larger areas of your body, like your decolletage, shoulders and neck, but still small enough to get into the crevices of your neck if you wanna do a little bit of contouring there. I wouldn't tie these brushes to certain makeup tasks. I would experiment with them, yes. You never know until you try. And even though it is a bigger brush, Again, you can get away with your bronzer application, but I love these brushes, as I mentioned before at the beginning, for finishing. Really nice to rely on a brush design like this, very soft, wide, almost like you're painting on your radiant powder. Again, just to bring all your cheek products together so they appear soft focus and not harsh on the skin. Next up, we have the WH-14 Highlight Brush. This is with the blue handle, Sokoho Goat, and it retails for $36. Not as soft as Psycho, I believe, but still very soft. And I was excited to have seen this brush because I don't have anything like it in my collection. I do have angled brushes, but not at this size. So you see that is a small brush pinched at the ferrule. It comes up to an angle and it's very fluffy. When you get to the longest bristle, it has really nice movement here and feels lovely against the skin. And I used a couple of products with this brush. I used it with my Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder in yellow. And although an angled brush, maybe not like your typically designed teardrop brush, I just thought because of the smaller brush head size to be very appropriate to use under my eyes and I was successful in doing so because once you pull it across, again, the longer bristle is left behind and it's almost like it trails the powder nicely right under the lash line here. And if you're one to not rely on a lot of powder under your eyes, then the smaller brush will just place the right amount here without overwhelming the skin. And I also used it to apply Venus Nectar from Pat McGrath's Celestial Odyssey Blush Glow Trio. Really nice for highlighter. You get the product right here on the brush and it fits well here on the cheekbones. I also use this brush for blush. You could whip around your blush in a manner that will diffuse the product on the apples of your cheeks. Now, it's not gonna be like 
like a brush that's medium size that you maybe pounds on the apples of your cheeks that take on the similar shape. So you might have to change your technique a little bit if you decide to use a brush like this. I like to whip around my blush so I can have it spread and have a little more control of how I want it to look. If you want to wear blush higher on the cheeks, then you could wear it here higher closer to the cheekbones and you see that the angle design just fits beautifully here higher on the cheeks. Really nice to apply blush with this brush in several ways again whether you want that faded out blush effect more on the center or higher to create some structure with your blush product. Great if you like to apply contour I mean, it will be a very precise application. Or perhaps you use a bronzer, maybe now with a smaller brush, so therefore it's more precise and will be a little more intense than if you would use one of these brushes. It's bigger, longer bristles, the application will be more diffuse, it's not going to be as intense as if you would then use this smaller brush. But some like to do that, they'll use the same product, but now with the smaller brush, it will then present more intensity in terms of product pickup but once you get it on there the brush is still very soft that you could diffuse the product in a way that will soften the application but pretty much will stay in the hollows of the cheeks so that's a great technique to rely on just to create dimension on your face while using the same product but then with a different brush size next up we have the WS 14T. This is with the short red handle, T dyed Sokoho goat hair. And I believe this retails also for $35 as the black handle, which we'll see in a minute. Again, similar to the WH14, but the WS14 has a little more density. As you see here, there's a lot more bristle. It's T dyed, which then presents this lovely color on the Sokoho bristles. All the tasks I mentioned about the WH14, same thing you can then use with the WS14. But because there's a little more bristle here, I like to use this brush over the WH with more bronzing and blush purposes. Because the WH is lighter, that's why I like to use it with highlighter because it won't pick up as much product. But because this has more bristle, it will pick up more product and will then lay down more if you choose to use this with highlighting and place it on the cheekbones. But because of the wider surface area, and again, if I put this up against the WH, you can see this has a wider surface area, which I think better to use for me. This is just a personal preference for bronzer application and blush application. Even so, I still use the WS14T to apply Pat McGrath's Divine Glow Highlighter as well as Lunar Nude. Because it is a little more dense, I thought this a more appropriate brush to use with a gelée type of formula so I could get a little more pickup. And I also used it with the Suku Blush Palette in 103. I love this brush for hollow of the cheek application. Again, you will just have to swirl and twirl if you wanted to spread a little bit more. If you're looking to achieve more of a sun-kissed glow that doesn't look as precise in application, then yes, use a bigger size brush. But if you're looking to cover as many cheek product tasks as possible with one brush, you could still use this, again, highlight, bronzer, and or contour, blush. And I forgot to mention this about the WH-14. Yes, ideal for finishing when it comes to the E33. But you could use a brush of this size maybe just to swirl and blur around the cheek area as well as the WS14T. You can definitely use it to swirl and twirl. I rather use the WH again because it has a little more movement in the bristles. It's not as packed as the WS. Same argument I presented for the E33 less bristle, more movement, less likely your product will move. If you wanted to use a smaller brush for blurring and for finishing, you most certainly may. I would probably reserve the WS14T for cheek purposes. You can get away with under eye application is a lot. You will then recognize the density of the brush more so than was found in the WH, but I still think this size makes it very versatile in terms of all the cheek products you can use it with. Next up, we have the WC14T. This is in the black short handle. Again, T dyed Sokoho goat hair, and this brush retails for $35. Now, this is marketed to be a beginner eyeshadow brush. I thought that interesting, fam. 
This is quite big for eyeshadow. I did experiment with it, and I think if you're one to use your blush and bronzer on your eyes, then this could work for sure. Just because of its size, is domed here at the top, whereas the WS is angled. They have similar density, but in the WC, I believe there's a little more bristle, which therefore will give you a little more pushback, right? The more density the brush has, the less of a flow is going to have. So if you put this up against the WH, is going to have a little more swirl and twirl than the WS. That's fine though, because if you're not looking to use this brush for finishing or for under eye setting, then you're fine, right? But I think this is a great bristle length and density for bronzer, for contour. If you're one to use like a cooler shade for your contour, or as I mentioned before, rely on your bronzer, but use a smaller, denser brush to get it more precise here into the hollows of the cheeks so it could appear more structured like in appearance, then this brush size is fantastic. You could also use this to pull down some contour or bronzer down the size of your nose. Again, really nice for cheek products. Even though it's a small brush, it's smaller than the apples of your cheeks. Because of the round dome design of the brush head, really great to swirl and twirl around a powder brush on the apples of your cheeks. And also higher on the cheekbones if you want that higher lifted blush effect. I would experiment with eyes. I would only imagine that uh, a shadow suitable for one and done looks like Suku satins or, or metallics, even Wayne Gauss shadows. You could just place it here on the edge of the brush and pull it across your crease. For smaller eyes, I don't know how that would go. I just don't know. I think it's something you have to experiment with. Why not, right? We never know until we try. I primarily, though, have used this brush with cheek products, and I love the results. Again, it's a small brush, but not so small that you can't successfully diffuse your products in a way that don't look super precise and unblended. You could diffuse the edges, make the products expand a little bit on your face, even though the brush might be smaller than your typical medium-sized cheek brush. Now, moving into the eyeshadow brushes. Next up, we have the YKQ12 eyeshadow brush. This is a black long handle. Kalinsky hair and it retails for $81. Before you lose your mind, hear me out. Kalinsky hair is premium, fam. You can use this with cream, powder, and or liquid. No matter what medium you use this brush with, the blend is amazing. Well, first of all, I love the size of the brush. You can use this to place product on the lid. You could use this to place it under the lash line, highlight, on the brow bone. You could turn the brush on its side to blend any shadow through your crease. So the size makes it very versatile. And the fact that you can jump from powder to cream to liquid, of course, I would recommend that you wipe in between just so that you don't overload the bristles and they can perform well. Again, you can't beat that versatility. And Kalinsky hair, super soft but ultra durable, which I would then recommend if you're going to splurge on this one brush, use it with as many products as you can and for as many tasks as you can, okay fam? In the demo, I used the YKQ12 to apply Oryx Cream Shadow that comes in the pot. And then I also went in to Bronze Borealis to apply a few shadows from there. Although not designed as your typical blender brush, teardrop brush that comes to a tip, it still blends really nicely through the crease. It's a little stiff, it has a little more pushback which I like because of that workhorse quality. If you're dealing with the mat that needs a little more movement when flowing against the skin, that's why I like to use this with my Pat McGrath mat. Also great with a Milk Cosmetic mat. Fantastic with a softer shadow, like again from Suku or Wayne Goss that just flows nicely against the skin. This is gonna move them effortlessly. And you can shape the shadow in a way that you probably couldn't with a typically shaped or designed blender. You can get a little more precise here on and around your crease. You can make that point shape and then turn the brush on its side to then diffuse that placement. So 
it, this is a great brush to experiment with, especially if you're trying to get out of your comfort zone. When it comes to eyeshadow application, I get stuck as well, fam. I'm very much accustomed to using certain brushes with certain types of products, mattes and shimmers and what like. But to then challenge yourself in using one brush, but still able to create one complete eye look, it's fun, you should try it. And finally, from Tonsido, we have the four piece eyeshadow brush set with blue handles retailing for $100. And each of these brushes are made with Sokoho goat hair undyed. The YWQ7, 9, 10, and 12. These are fun. I had a blast using all four brushes. They are shader brushes that come in different sizes, but I get a kick of big fluffy shader brushes because I immediately think one and done moments, slap it on the lid, the brush is wide enough for that application, turn it on its side, you could blend it through your crease. When compared to the YKQ, the YWQ has a little more fluff to it. If I show you these head on, you can see that the Kalinsky brush here has a little more stiffness. It looks a little more packed, whereas the Sokoho goat hair has a little more movement. So that can indicate for you a shadow that's a little more flowy joey on the skin that's not going to need that workhorse quality. It's not going to need a lot of movement. It's just going to be effortless in that application. Again, one and done moments. Now, I will say when it comes to tighter packed metallics and shimmers in the eyeshadow pan, this reigns supreme when fluffing through the crease and also picking up a shadow that's a little more loose in the pan. I would go to the medium sized brush for metallic pickup, like a metallic texture found in a Pat McGrath palette that's a little tighter in the pan and you need the shoulder bristles and that density to successfully pick it up. This does pick up some shadow, but it's not gonna achieve the same opacity that a medium to medium small shader would. So that's just a heads up. You can still use this one brush for your entire eye look. And again, I would just experiment with the different textures and techniques used with application just so you can discover what your best method is. I, again, love this to just fluff through the crease and this was great to use with a matte shadow, pull it through the crease and then use the same brush to fluff under your lash line. And because it is a bigger shader brush, it's gonna give you that haze, not gonna keep the shadow as tight to the lash line as a smaller brush would, just keep that in mind. But if you like your shadow to drop a little bit, Mm, this one's good for that. YWQ10, the medium Sokoho goat hair eyeshadow brush, although smaller than the number 12, is still a pretty big shader brush. And I think you can use this for the same tasks that I covered with the 12. It still has enough fluff that you can blend through your crease with. But if you like to keep your shadow tighter into the lower lash line, this is not going to haze it out as much as the number 12. And because it is shorter bristle, it's a little more dense, not as much movement, it will pick up more shadow like a Pat McGrath metallic to place on your lid if you want a little more intensity there with that metallic shade. And although shaped like a shader, look at that flow. Really nice on the blend. If you hold it closer to the end of the handle, you get a really soft, diffused look on your eyeshadow, especially once you've applied everything, you wanna whip it out here a little bit to create that blurred effect. This size brush is perfect for that. The YWQ9, I would consider this to be small medium compared to the number 10, definitely smaller, shorter bristled, and now with the brush head size of this type, great, great for metallic shadow pickup for standout lit colors that you want to shine, that you want to show blam blam. Also great for inner corner highlight because it is smaller. Now you can nudge this in closer to your inner corner without the shadow spreading too high. You have a little more control because of its smaller brush head size. You could pull some shimmer or metallic here on the inner lower part of your lash line as I like to do with my eyeshadow. And for a tighter lash line application here, if you like to layer your mattes where you like to apply a darker matte closer to the lash line and then use a bigger brush 
brush with a medium tone shade to then blend out the edges and create that nice gradient under your lash line then you can use the two brushes for that and lastly we have the YWQ7 small shader and compared to the number nine significantly smaller this is fantastic to blend out liner with it has such nice smooth flow to the skin it's not too big that will spread your liner too far but really nice if you want to create that wing effect using a liner without having to rely on the actual pencil but then use the brush to shape it out in a way that you would like also great as you would suspect for inner corner highlight here get it on there to create that spotlight inner lower lash line placement really nice tight intense shadow placement here on the lower lash line maybe if you don't want to use a typical liner you can then dab this in a black or deep brown eyeshadow to create a softer wing here along the lash line and because the brush is beyond soft it won't move the skin it will just move the product which will make it easy for the makeup wearer to create that wing shape and that is it covering the brushes i have from tonsedo let me know if you heard about this brand if you have brushes from them already any questions that you might have please leave them down below I will try my best to get to as many as possible and a huge thank you again to Fude Beauty for their support not only for sending the Tonsedo brushes but also providing information about them so I could better film this video for you fam I'll see you down in the comments and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial, Bude Extravaganza, monthly favorite or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.